All right, so in a little while, I'm headed to a brunch. I don't do a lot of social activities, as anyone who watches these know, but my gallery, Chase and Galleries, has <clears throat> is holding a brunch, and so I'm heading over. Excuse me. <clears throat> but in the meantime, I'm still in my jammies. I haven't showered because I wanted to get up early and, and work, on, work on some paintings. Um, Today, what I really need to do is get ready for another event I have coming up this week. I'm doing a live painting uh, thing with uh, a real estate company called Michael Saunders. Michael Sta Saunders is a very large firm here in the Sarasota area, and I've been invited to paint in one of their homes at an open house. And so I'm kind of getting ready for that. I'm getting, I'm just getting ready for a few things, but... Today is about being in my jammies and doing the edges or starting the edges of my paintings. Now I wanted to share something with you because I was watching YouTube again last night. I was watching, I was, unfortunately I started watching uh, videos on Facebook and, and Instagram of people in their studios and they have big beautiful studios very formal, very much the this is what you have to have to be an artist type studio. The kind of thing I had, what, six years ago with the huge white walls and the perfect lighting and the windows and north light and all that junk that really is a great luxury and a great convenience, but I no longer have and I haven't since 2013. Um, I had to move out of that space and I've been bouncing ever since and primarily using the spaces that I just live in like most of us and this is what I'm getting to is you know what you just you do the best you can do with what you have. I am currently out of mineral spirits. I have roughly two drops of Neo McGilp left. So how do I keep painting? How do we keep working when we just don't have the supplies? Well, then I go ahead and find another way to work. With the Michael Saunders thing this week, um, I've decided I'm going to plant myself by a window and I don't really enjoy doing uh, landscapes, but I'm going to set up to do their view outside one of their windows and um, hope I can find something really compelling, really interesting in that landscape instead of this is water, this is sky see if I can find something else. I've already been studying the, uh, the property, uh, the views, to see what I can pull out. So when I get there, I've actually got it started and I can set up and just go ahead. Um, but the trick is to find, find something more compelling. And I apologize, I've once again got the old craggy old man face, craggy old lady face, because I'm just, I just put on pants and came out here and started filming and working. But anyway, uh, I apologize for that, but um, I'm wanting to find something more compelling than this is sky, this is water, this is tree. I just absolutely, as we know, I hate it. I find it lazy. I find it incredibly lazy and I, for me, and I have to dig in. I have to find something more. I have to. So I'm watching all these videos this morning of artists in their fancy spaces and they're being filmed in dramatic ways and everything is interesting and look at what they can do, look at how shiny they are and obviously I'm not there and I'm expecting most of you who are watching this aren't either. Most of us just are not. So I got depressed and started, I went on um, YouTube and started looking up Van Gogh for some reason. Um, I just started looking up Van Gogh. I wanted to know, I quite frequently asked what kind of glaze you use, what kind of varnish. I don't use varnish. I don't like it. I don't like that it takes it, this really, um, it, it, it takes the paint from, from uh, being accessible to all of a sudden you've got this barrier. You've absolutely, you've got this barrier. And to me, a lot of times the varnish feels like it's there not just to protect, but to enhance the painting, which is fine, which is fine for some people, but also it builds a barrier. Um, it's kind of used as a band-aid for some people. Um, it's kind of used to enhance by other people, 
but then it puts a barrier between the viewer and the paint, and I love the paint. So I went on and I was like, no, what kind of varnish did Van Gogh use? And pulled up on YouTube this really wonderful talk that made me feel better about how I paint, the circumstances that I paint in, the constant stressors in my life and in all of our lives. And it was a talk by Lydia, oh shoot, I had her name, Lydia, oh crap, where'd she go? Lydia, wait, let me find it. Oh, Lydia Vetz at the Boston Museum uh, of Fine Arts. I'm going to show you the video. It's Van Gogh Techniques and Methods. Oops, I think my finger hit something I didn't want it to hit. Yep, because they do that. We're done. No, we can stop. Oh, nope, we can put that away. Oh, my God. A train wreck ensues. There's the video, Van Gogh Techniques and Methods. It was uh, filmed on October 13th, 2015, and I learned so much. It was over, it was probably an hour and a half long, and I couldn't stop watching it. Um, she really went through his painting stages, how he went from an utter and complete failure, hello, at everything in life, at everything in life, and, uh, for, uh, at 30, I think at 30 years old, he started to paint. And he went from using flat brush, using blending techniques that he was mentored, he was taught to use, blending, 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 smooth surfaces. And he, how she showed how he slowly got into textures. He met, he went to Paris, he met, um, uh, other impressionist artists who were using different techniques, using a technique where you dry out the oil paint, you let it sit on paper, it sucks out the oil, and then you just add mineral spirits and boom, 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 you brush with that. So you've got this super dry technique. It's something he used once or twice. He didn't particularly like it, so he moved on to uh, using heavier and heavier oils and more and more and more technique. But going to Paris and learning that you could do things differently other than using, you know, a Neo McGill, which is an old, old um, medium that I happen to like, uh, uh, using Neo McGill, using linseed oils and sunflower oil and all that. Uh, he just went into straight paint and built and built and built and built until we had sunflowers and we had these beautiful landscapes with severe textures and, and colors and how he took advantage of the paints that were coming out at the time made during the Industrial Revolution. Um, they had just started, uh, uh, just started in his time because of the Industrial Revolution, which, by the way, started in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, a place I lived. You're welcome, thank you. So, just learning things like that and what a struggle it was, what an absolute, complete and utter struggle it was for him to buy supplies, for Theo, who, who was financing his life at that point as a painter and accepting his paintings, his brother Theo, his brother Theo, his brother, said, I believe, I believe in you, I will take your paintings, I will sell them. He didn't, but he said, I'm going to keep financing you regardless. Theo saw his talents. Theo saw Theo had vision beyond what he was able to sell at the time. And because of Theo, Van Gogh was able to paint a new, build an entirely new technique, something that no one had ever done before. And now we hold in such high and deep regard when at the time no one did. He was laughed at. Theo was laughed at. But Theo continued to carry his work and try and try and try. Sent him money for supplies. But what I learned in the talk last night was how inexpensively Vincent tried to live so that he wasn't as much of a burden on Theo. Um, he tried, he would send a, a list of the paints that he needed. Um, and he would leave colors out because he knew he could mix his own colors. Um, using the different paints, using the new invention of the tube, paint in a tube. He would send Theo 
notes, this is what I need, this is what I need, please, and then work with just that. He left out expensive paints. <laughs> Where are my paint tubes? I just, I, feel, I felt so validated by this because I try, I, I can't spend money, like most people, like most people who are watching this, most likely, we can't spend money on $50 tubes of paint. We can't. We can't buy the new fancy. We can't have the, you know, hundred, three hundred dollar brush. That's not reality for most of us. So we work with what we have. As Vincent did, as Vincent did. In the video I learned that he would paint on any type of fabric. He made his made his own ground. He made his own ground, his own gesso, to save money. Although he did take advantage of the newly, um, you know, the new, uh, what is it, uh, production line uh, canvases at times when Theo could afford it, he made his own gesso. He grabbed whatever cloth he could. Theo would send him cloth, but if he ran out of cloth, if he ran out of canvas or linen or whatever cloth he had, he would use a dish towel. So if you're feeling the way I feel most of the time, like a complete and utter failure who's just constantly struggling to, to push their way up to that hill, like Prometheus and his little stone. Please take heart. I am trying to take heart that Vincent van Gogh had these struggles, these real struggles, these real life struggles as well. He was not supported by the church like Michelangelo or Da Vinci. He was supported by a brother who worked a job and helped, the, helped Vincent continue to paint, helped him through all of his mental illness when he was hospitalized, but still able to get out in the fields and paint. One thing I learned last night in this video was that before this, people didn't do plain air as much. It was it was just it was too cumbersome carrying. I didn't know this, you know, bringing their little bottles of paint was just it was so cumbersome and unrealistic that paint that. When the tube, painting tube, finally came out, or I can't remember the guy's name who, who invented it, but uh, this one guy who was really great invented um, tube paint, or the tube for paint. Don't fall over. Um, the tube for paint. This allowed people like Vincent to go outside and conveniently paint without having to deal with spilling mediums and blah, blah, blah. And that's how he ended up with his fields, with his paintings of the fields. And some of his greater, more intriguing works, like Starry Night. Like Starry Night. The man who struggled every day, struggled to eat, struggled to paint, struggled to survive, gave us Starry Night with very little to work with. Oh, there's more glass. Okay. Glass left over from the train wreck of a mess my ex-housemate made. Just fell out of this canvas. Awesome. Guess what I'll be doing after this once I get these uh, gessoed. Anyway, that's my little lecture today. Let's keep hanging in there. Vincent did. We can too. All right? Ciao.